Hi, uh, I am Subhash Anakuritwaku and uh, as I promised you in my uh, uh, previous lessons, so I am back to uh, you with my uh, the, the first lesson about the present simple tense. I think uh, you may remember about uh, what I talked to you about uh, the basic introduction and uh, how a sentence is built up and all that uh, you should be able to and just to have a wee bit of knowledge on them is a must all right okay and uh, let me just explain you about this one the first one is uh, the person uh, present uh, simple tense or we call it the simple present tense either ways are all right you can either call it the simple present tense or present simple tense no problem and uh, so this comes under present tense this grammar rule comes under present tense so under present tense, as you all know, uh, there are four grammar lessons. Number one, the simple present tense. Number two, present continuous tense. And number three, present perfect tense. And the last is present perfect continuous tense. And in order to study these grammar lessons, you also need to remember about how I talk to you about a verb. The four types of verbs like an infinitive. I think you may remember about an infinitive and a singular verb as well. Alright, for this lesson of course you need to know about just an infinitive and how to make a singular verb. That's all you need to know about. Fine, and then let's see how the usage, the, how this particular tense is used. So let me tell you this one, number one, here yeah, I've written in short forms, used to express habitual actions. So what do you understand about habitual actions? It comes under the word, under the noun habit, and it becomes an adjective, habitual, habitual actions. Whatever the things we do as a practice or as a habit. So habitual actions should all be used under the simple present tense. Well, now, when we do use them, what is important is also about adverbs and adverbal phrases. So, together with adverbs and adverbal phrases are required, especially in present simple tense. So, that is one symbol that you all can understand whether the present simple tense is used in a sentence just by looking at these adverbs or the adverbal phrases. What is an adverb? An adverb is a word which talks or which describes a verb. Alright, so let's see uh, some of the examples for adverbs. Often, usually, never, sometimes, always and occasionally. I've written few. And let me go ahead with the first example. He plays tennis well. Now, I've used uh, three subject pronouns here. Number one, he. So, this of course is a singular subject pronoun. What do we call it? We call it a singular subject pronoun. So, as we have used a singular subject pronoun, we need to use a singular verb. We need to use a singular verb. Why? Because... The structure is singular subject plus singular verb plus object. So depending on that particular type of a structure, we need to follow up this sentence. Now as you all can see, the verb play, the verb play is an infinitive. That is an infinitive. But what I have done here is I have just added the letter S here. Why? The last letter is Y and then before the last letter you find a vowel letter A. So in order to make it a singular verb, what you have to do is to add S and then make it singular. Now, the plural verb or the infinitive play is made as a singular verb by adding S as we got to use it with the singular subject pronoun he. So I hope that you understand that. So he plays tennis well. When you look at this sentence, it is obvious that this sentence is in 
present simple tense so he may play tennis as a practice or as a habit that's what we have used present simple tense let's move to number two which is she never comes late to school she never comes late to school all right so the never adverb never 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 and that's an adverb comes the verb so as it is an adverb we have used this adverb never very close to the verb that is how the usage of an adverb an adverb is to be used very close proximity of a verb close to a verb and uh, here too we have taken a singular subject pronoun that is she therefore we have again made the plural verb or the infinitive come just by adding s why the last letter c o m e e is a vowel letter therefore in order to make it singular we have just added the letter s and then made it as singular so c comes late to school also follows the same sentence structure as singular subject plus singular verb plus object all right let's move on to the next one the third example i i of course we take in english language as a plural subject pronoun now for example if i repeat you with the 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 pronouns but uh, i mean to say that uh, subject pronouns like i we you they i we you they so i we you they can be called as plural subject pronoun why do we call them as plural subject pronouns because we can use them only in the place of a subject therefore we call them as subject pronouns so that is very clear to you and i then as i said before is a plural subject pronoun therefore we got to use a plural verb so get up get up and then we can make it get up why because the subject in this sentence is plural so what's the structure now for example if i told as i told you that the first structure is used as i mean used to use with singular subject pronouns so number 2 has to be like plural subject plus plural verb plus object i hope that you can see it this is number 1 and this is number 2 plural subject plus plural verb plus object so in that case we don't have to make this verb infinitive as singular why because we have a plural subject and uh, it's not only these subject pronouns you can also use nouns in place of these subjects as subjects we can use nouns or as subject pronouns if i say like okay a boy or a girl a man men women teachers doctors engineers of course you can use them as nouns fine so now i took you a uh, three simple examples in order to explain you about the present simple habitual actions i believe that it's very clear to you fine and uh, let me also talk to you with these uh, simple verbs now this of course you have to know when you uh, do use this language uh you see verbs of the senses or verbs of the expressing feelings feelings and the the verbs of senses now these verbs for example are used only in the present simple tense you can use them in continuous sense you can use them in continuous forms which means like just by adding ing which is as a present participle verbs it's not possible actually but you may sometimes see them but that's not uh, i mean that's not proper that's not really uh, the proper way to use for example like feel hear see smell appreciate hate like and love right so we don't use like i'm feeling or i feel 
I hear, I see, I smell, I appreciate, I hate, I like, I love. So we don't use them in continuous forms. We don't say like, I'm feeling, I'm hearing, I'm seeing, I'm smelling, I'm appreciating, I'm hating, I'm liking, and I'm loving. No, not at all. So don't uh, ever think of using them in continuous forms. So we don't use them. And uh, so this is just a simple insight uh, to you to have a, a simple understanding about what to use and what not to use. I think uh, it will also help you. It will also help you to understand. And uh, this is the most important part of this uh, lesson, which I mean to say that other uses of the present simple tense or the simple present tense. The other uses. Why do I call the other uses of uh, simple present tense? Because it is not possible actually to have one way of uh, the usage to use in one way, which I mean to say that habitual access. Not only that, there are some other ways which we sometimes are not aware of. Fine, so let me tell, go ahead with the, uh, the first one. Used, the present simple tense is used in dramatic, narrative, describing actions, particularly in a play. Just imagine about a drama or play. A play means a drama. So the language we use in a drama is present simple tense or simple present tense. Now, uh, now uh, we'll go ahead with the, the example. He opens the refrigerator and searches in there and takes out a bottle of milk. You see the present simple verbs used here, opens, searches and takes. So three present simple singular verbs are used here because the subject is he. And so this is one good example for you to understand about dramatic narrative which is used in a play. And B used by radio commentators especially in radio commentaries especially at sports events we use. Now for example I would say Sanat balls to Mahela and Sangha picks it up. You see here balls and picks. Present simple singular verbs. And let's move to the next one. This is so important for you, especially with regard to the newspaper headlines. Newspaper headlines. So referring to future events or referring to present events, whatever it is, or referring to past events, we do usually use them in present simple form. Let's talk initially about referring to future and referring to past events. How newspaper headlines are coming in papers. The president leaves for America tomorrow. As you will know, as we get here tomorrow, which is in the future, you may sometimes feel that it is, it is to be used in future simple life. The president will leave for America tomorrow. No, not at all. You, you can use it in such a way. Why? Because it's a newspaper headline. When you take a newspaper, you can see the headline, President leaves for America tomorrow. But here, the time frame or the date is given. And because it's a newspaper headline. And when referring to the, the past events in newspaper headlines, for example, like match ends, which is... Singular again, in a draw. This refers to a past tense. So this is all about uh, uh, newspaper headlines. And uh, so I gave you about few informations uh, about how to use present simple tense. And also I'm going to talk to you in detail about uh, how to use a positive sentence, which is now almost all the sentences which I told you are all in the positive form or which uh, we rather say affirmative form. What do we call them? Affirmative form. And number two comes as questions or interrogative form. And number three comes as negative. And uh, number four comes as negative question form. So I do hope that uh, you had a 
a simple understanding about this one please do refer and check time to time and uh, my plan is uh, so different I'm planning to do each and every lesson each and everything and uh, will bring you some important things after doing the first lesson we'll come back to you with some uh, practicals actually and uh, you also need to know like how this uh, present simple tense or the simple present tense is used in our practical uh, usage all right uh, thank you very much and i uh, hope to see you and uh, in, in my next uh, video clip and uh, i hope that you do uh, understand the lesson and uh, expect you to subscribe my channel and uh, we'll see you soon with uh, further uh, information about the simple presenting thank you